Paul's Restoration presents Jeep of Jared Part 2 Engine and Transmission Rebuild Here you see the internals of the transmission have been removed for rebuild. What you see here from the top view of the transmission is reverse and first is in the rear of the transmission and second and third in front. This is the front main shaft and bottom cluster gear, new bushings and shaft were replaced, plus synchronous gears and retaining clips. After ensuring everything is installed and aligned correctly, the transmission and transfer case are reassembled and ready for installation. Circled in green is a crack in the block on the distributor side that was discovered during the teardown and cleaning of the block. Also circled in green were more cracks discovered on the head surface near the water ports for cooling. Other imperfections are cracks in the cylinders, as you see circled in green, which will require new cylinder sleeves in two of the cylinders, and the other will require boring. We will discuss this later on in the video. Most cast iron block repairs are done using a metal stitching or pinning process. Welding an engine block is a very difficult process due to excess heat that could further damage this 77-year-old block. So in this case as you can see stitching was the preferred method. Stitching kits use a bolt of the same material as the block. To repair small and large cracks in cast iron blocks and cylinder heads. The process includes drilling, tapping, installing the bolt correctly, and grinding just to name a few steps. For this we chose to bring the block to Dave's Auto Machine in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. This ensured the job was done right by a professional automotive machinist, and the heart of this 77-year-old rolling piece of history will work for years to come. You can see four gold-colored discs inserted into the block, these are the freeze plugs. Freeze plugs are seals that are designed to pop out of an engine block, should the water in the cooling system, or other water, which has come into the engine freezes to ice and expands. The main goal is to prevent a cracked housing. A broken freeze plug and some lost cooling liquid is far cheaper than a broken engine. What you see here is the valve side of the engine, where the push rods and springs are to be installed. Here you can see two sleeves have been inserted into cylinders 3 and 4 with a yellow dot. Earlier you saw the cracks in these cylinders, and they needed to be repaired. Once the sleeve was installed, they were bored 30 thousands to be an exact diameter match as the other two cylinders with the red dot. In this photo you see the valve seats have been replaced, and this is highlighted with an orange dot. The main purpose for proper valving seating are the following. First, compression gas sealing, prevents compressed gaseous bodies and combustion gas from leaking into the manifold. Second, heat transfer, releases heat in the valve to the cylinder head. Third, strength, holds tight when the valve is mounted. Fourth, wear resistance, hard to wear down under high heat and high load. Now you see all the valve seats have been replaced and the stitching repair circled in green by the valve seats. Now that the block and head surfaces have been cleaned, stitched and repaired, we begin the rebuilding process. As we begin the rebuild process you can see the crankshaft has been installed. Now the pistons have been installed and connected to the crankshaft. Here you can see that the push rods, springs, rocker arms and valves have been installed. This shows the intake manifold has been cleaned and installed. Now the head has been bolted to the block and properly torqued. The distributor was installed next. Now this next step shows the engine is primed with black primer before putting on final paint. With the primer dry, the final coat of green paint is put on the engine. Now with the engine installed on the chassis, there are just a few more things to do before we start the engine. We have to finish putting on the carburetor, generator, fan, fan belt, starter, and spark plug wires. Last but not least make a few adjustments before the engine is started for the first time. As you can see all the hard work and TLC have paid off. The heart of this 1944 Jeep roars back to life. We are too 
two-thirds of the way done. The Jeep of Jared project has seen a rolling chassis created from a pile of rubble in part one, and the rebuild of the engine and transmission in part two. Part three will follow the installation of the new tub, the final electrical connections such as lights and gauges, testing to ensure they all work. Last but not least the stenciling of the hood numbers, along with mounting the ID plate with the Jeep specs. Please look out for part three. The final chapter. Jeep of Jared. Thanks for watching and we hope you tune back in for the next and final chapter. If you have a military vehicle that needs some TLC or a total rebuild, give Paul a call at 978-342-4745.